We are here today to celebrate both the role of art in our daily lives and its impact on who we are as Americans. This subcommittee has a long history of supporting the arts. We provide the funding for many of the nation's most treasured cultural institutions, including the Smithsonian Institution, National Gallery of Art, and the Kennedy Center. We also fund the National Endowment of the Arts and the National Endowment for Humanities. I'm pleased to note that for fiscal year 2009, we were able to increase both endowments by 14% over the previous year. In fact, during the last Congress, we added $63 million to the request received from the prior administration. As you can see on the charts displayed here through this subcommittee, Congress provided $155 million for NEA in regular 2009 appropriations. This, that was a 21% increase above the budget we received from President Bush. We hope to be able to continue to provide increases in the coming year. As you can see on the other chart, this industry supports 5.7 million jobs and has annual expenditures of $166 billion. That is why this committee insisted on including an additional $50 million for the NEA grants through the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act. That $50 million plus the $155 million I mentioned earlier gives the NEA a total of $205 million in fiscal year 2009. That is the most money ever provided to the NEA in one year. We did this because we simply could not and cannot ignore such a vibrant portion of our economy. Leonardo da Vinci once wrote that to develop a complete mind, one must study the science of art. Study the art of science, develop senses to learn how to see, and only then realize that everything connects to everything else. I cannot question the logic of such a great artist and wise man. We know that the study of art and music connect us with our world. We also have learned since his time that the study of art and music makes us better students by improving our understanding of logic, math, and many other subjects. Just as important, the federal investment in the arts creates jobs and contributes to the economic base of many of our communities. We have before us today an impressive panel of artists and art advocates, all of whom are uniquely qualified to explain why the arts and arts education are important. I want to thank Americans for the Arts for, for helping to organize today's panel. At the appropriate point, I will ask their president, Robert Lynch, to introduce the panel, and we will call them up individually to testify. I want each witness to know that we appreciate the time they have taken to appear before us. Our panelists all have different roles in the arts community and bring their different perspectives to our hearing today. Some of you finance art programs, others of you manage art programs, and still others perform. And many more of us here today simply listen to, watch, and enjoy the arts. And I think we can all agree, and I know we hear this today, the arts make our lives better. We know that arts teach us, and just like da Vinci wrote so many years ago, we understand that art makes us more intelligent and complete human beings. Our challenge today is to make the case for increased arts funding, which will in turn fund programs that will reach most communities, more students, and more budding artists. For our first panel today, we have two members of Congress devoted to the arts and who support federal funding for the arts. Congresswoman Louise Slaughter and Congressman Todd Platts are the co-chairs of the Congressional Arts Caucus. We are pleased to have them here today. Chair Slaughter would, and I, I, before I turn this over to you, I want to uh, call on uh, Mike Simpson, our new ranking Republican member who's a strong advocate for the arts as well from Idaho uh, for his opening remarks.